In this 2D needle felting tutorial, I'm going to show you how to needle felt fox portrait on mittens. I'm going to share all the steps I took in order to create this wonderful felted image and also share my tips on wool painting along the way. And you have a chance to vote on what animal should I needle felt on the other mitten. More about that later in the video. It's important that the mittens you are going to use have a lot of natural fiber content. You can see on the screen the content of the fiber in these ones. These were kindly gifted to me by my friend Linda, who runs a yarn shop in Netherlands. I will link her shop in the description box in case you want to check it out. There, and also in the pinned comment, you will find a link where you can get the design template I created this myself, and today I'm going to use template for the right hand. I'm going to be using brush mat, because it perfectly fits into my mitten, and that's very important. I will explain it in a second, but usually I do suggest using brush mat or foam mat for 2D needle felting. Here you can see how I'm carefully fitting the mat inside the mitten. I'm really taking my time here because this is a crucial step. First of all, I want my 2D needle felted image to be centered, so I'm trying to align both sides evenly. And then I also want to work on the stitches themselves because I don't want them to be too stretched. Otherwise, it will be very hard to felt on stretched knit fabric. And also, when I take everything off the felting mat, it won't look great. Because the stitches won't be able to regain their original shape. So it's always better to try to match the original look of the stitches as much as possible. So again, rethink the size of your felting mat. Maybe you will have to cut the foam felting mat in the right size in order to fit it in or use a kitchen sponge. You can check what works for you. I'm happy with this brush mat. I just have to spend some time trying to pull the fiber away from the mat and realigning everything in order to keep everything nice and close. I'm also going to use scissors today, 40 and 42 gauge needles and also a multi-needle tool because it really helps to speed things up. To transfer the image, I'm using this fine tip marker. It's just a basic marker that I had lying around in the house. Nothing special there. Here are the colors I used for the shadows in my painting, this dark brown and various shades of gray. Then this is the base orange. I used only one shade of orange throughout the painting. And for the highlights, I used this pastel yellow. All of this wool is carded wool where fiber is going in all different directions. This caramel brown was perfect for the middle values. I used it in many places of the painting. And of course, some bleached white for the highlights in the fur and for the ear fluffs. There are two tops I used. This warm brown is used in some places where I needed additional shading. And this reddish brown I used in the eyes. Here is a close-up so you can see it better. I restricted myself from using this color anywhere else, so the eyes really stand out. And of course, I cannot forget the black I used for the eyes, nose, and all other dark details. I will first cut out the overall shape of my fox, because I want to transfer the outline first. I'm going to leave two edges straight because in these areas the design is abstract and I will hand draw the lines later on. This mitten is quite fluffy, so instead of trying to draw a straight line because I would not succeed, I'm using tiny dots. This way I'm making sure that the marker is reaching the actual knit fabric instead of catching on the fluff. 
Then I'm drawing a couple of lines by hand. Here I wasn't very worried about the lines being super precise, so I tried to draw a line and it went somehow successful. The fuzzy yarn used for the mittens was making things a little bit difficult because you never know where the line will end up as the marker was picked up by the fuzz more than by the actual stitches. If you want to be more precise, I suggest sticking to dots. Having precise placement for the eyes and nose was very important for me, so I decided to cut my template so I can later use it as a stencil. I find the embroidery scissors just perfect for this because they have the sharp ends and it makes the life super easy. Okay, now I'm carefully lining the template with the outline we previously created and I'm quite generous with the marker trying to fill in these holes I have cut out. These are going to be the darkest parts of my wool painting, so I'm fairly certain that there won't be any marker peeking through the wool. Just a couple of touches with my marker to make sure that everything is clearly visible and I have all the guidelines I'm going to need. Now I'm picking up scissors once again and this time I'm cutting this line that will mark where the orange turns into white. This is very important line for me because this will help me to create well-defined muzzle, so again I don't want to hand draw it and I'm using the template as a stencil. You will now see me adding some lines by hand. I'm just trying to add some guidelines for myself to have the overall vision of the fox I want to create, because this design isn't based on any particular photo. I do have a lot of fox images opened up in front of me during this project and I'm trying to create my own version of it. I'm starting with the black tips of both ears. So I took a tiny amount of black wool and rolled it between my fingers for a tiny bit to make it more easy to control. As I already mentioned, this time we are working with a tricky background. Knit fabric is stretchy, it's not even, it's not flat, so I will have to use a different approach than I usually have. Today we are going to slowly build the image, because it's important to create thick layer of wool, because again the fabric might stretch and having a thick well felted image will make sure that it's durable and also I want to layer a lot of different colors on top of each other. This will create this lovely watercolor effect and again protect the contrast and the details from stretching. I will speed up some of the parts of the video and cut out the sections where I'm reaching for my tools and doing other things that doesn't matter for the creation of the painting, but I will make sure to include all of the important bits so you can try to recreate this painting at home if you want to. Remember that you can work on your own pace and take breaks when needed. I suggest watching the whole video before starting the project so you get the general idea of my approach and you can make your own changes along the way. And of course you can rewatch it in the future if you need any guidance. It took me a little while to get used to using the net fabric as the background. I noticed that it takes a little more stabbing to get the fiber to tangle with the yarn and also I had to hold my needle at the angle way more often compared to the typical wool felt I use for my backgrounds. Most of the time I was successful with holding the needle at 40 or 45 degree angle. Now you are going to see me finishing off the work with the outlines of the ears using the black and then moving on to warm caramel color.
Now I want to start adding wool everywhere where there is going to be white and also everywhere where there is significant shadow. So here I'm taking the bleached white, I'm rolling it between my fingers a little bit, this time in a ball, and I'm placing it on the puffy parts of the muzzle. Unfortunately, I am not an expert in fox anatomy, so my apologies in case I'm using the wrong words to describe things. You're always welcome to, to correct me in the comments. This first layer will look terrible, but don't worry about it. We are now just trying to fill in the spaces between the stitches and try to add the first layers of color. So here I used white, then I'm using this light gray, and um, we are placing it underneath the chin. Important detail for those just starting out in needle felting, please keep your pokes as shallow as possible. The barbs located on the top of the needle is doing all of the work, so you can keep your pokes shallow and you won't have any problems with feeling the work of the mat at the end. I'm also adding a little bit of gray on the left cheek, just where the color turns from the orange to white, because I think in this painting the light will come from the upper right corner and thus the muzzle would create a little bit of shadow on this cheek too. And this fox has turned her head to face us, so the head will drop shadow on the body. I'm using dark brown and defining it here. It might look a little bit confusing at first, but later on when we add the rest of the colors, this will make sense. Now I'm starting to add the pure white to the chin. Again, don't worry if this looks messy, this is just the first layer. I wanted to start adding the orange, but I noticed that there is very harsh contrast between the orange and the dark brown I used for the shadow. So I decided to add another color. This is a lighter warm brown and I had it only as wool tops. So I'm now cutting it in smaller chunks so the fiber is shorter and I'm using my fingers to mess it up a bit and then I will lay this on top of the dark brown to make the color change a little more subtle. When adding the orange, I'm trying to spread the fiber apart as much as possible. This way the shadow colors will have a lot of room where to peek through and this will create natural looking fur effect. And that's exactly what we are looking for. Again, don't worry if this stage looks a little bit messy, we are going to build it up piece by piece. I will now take the orange and focus on the different parts of the outline, here on the cheeks and later on on the top part of the head. And what I'm trying to do here is to create the glow of the fur. Later on we will build a lot of layers here and we will add some shadows of course, but I want to have this bright orange as base because it will peek through everything we add on later and this will create the natural shine of the fur, making our fox look very healthy and lively.
I'm adding a tiny bit of brown between the ears because the shadow here tend to be a little bit darker and I'm blending it with a thin layer of the bright orange. I will also finish the backs of both ears. I'm adding the orange here and I'm letting some of the fiber to overlap with the black to create the natural ombre we often see in the fur. Now that I have added the orange, I can see that this section down here is still too dark. So I'm going to add a little bit of the warm brown once again, and then layer the bright orange on top of it. I'm working with very thin layers and I'm trying to spread the fiber out as much as possible. This way I'm letting the lower layers to peek through and create the natural fur effect. My tip for everyone who is trying to follow this tutorial would be keep your template close and use it often, especially if it's one of your first 2D needle felting projects. When you are laying out these first base layers, it's important to stick with the markings and the initial shapes. Later on, you will have a base already in place and you will be able to make your own artistic decisions and blend some things, add highlights and shadows, but if you drastically change the base shapes already in these first steps, you risk changing the overall dimensions and proportions of your little fox. You will now see me adding some wispy whites to blend the neck with the red of the back and then of course we are going to add all of the white fluff on the chest. Now I'm about to introduce a new color. This is the caramel brown I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Here I'm trying it out to see how it blends with the rest of the color and I think it works nicely. I just wanted to quickly add a little bit of white here before I'm moving on to the forehead to add this caramel brown as the middle value. I'm adding it close to the orange we previously felted and I'm trying to fill in the gaps that we still have. I'm letting some of the fiber overlap with the orange and this will create a nice natural looking blend.
we are getting closer and closer to the most detailed part of the face. So I'm going to use my template once again to help me navigate where I should place the nose. I'm using pure black wool for this because I want the nose to be one of the darkest details in the painting. I have rolled a tiny amount between my fingers to create a little ball and then I'm aligning my template and felting the nose down through the cutout we created before. Then I'm rolling a tiny strand of wool between my fingers this will help me to create a precise line that usually connects the nose and the mouth. Don't be afraid to use your scissors to cut off the excess wool. I rolled the remaining wool between my fingers once more and now I'm using it to create the mouth. I feel like I'm losing the guidelines for the muzzle, so I will once again pick up my template and my marker and make tiny markings where the orange of the muzzle turns into white. Because usually here we have a little bit of darker color. At least that is what I noticed by looking on a lot of photos. So here I'm using the dark brown and I'm adding tiny tiny amount on each side of the nose. Then I'm taking even smaller amount of the warm brown and adding it even closer to the nose. This will help me to blend everything with the orange later on. Speaking of the orange, I'm going to use it to fill in the gaps we still have. This color will be all around the eyes, especially in the under eye slash cheek area. Here I'm using a generous amount of orange and very carefully felting it down. I don't want to accidentally blend the bridge of the nose together with the cheeks. So instead of putting the pure orange in here, I'm first layering a tiny amount of white wool and felting it down. And only then I'm adding thin thin layer of the orange, spreading the fibers out as much as possible so the white can still peek through. When it's felted down, I will move on to adding a little bit more of the caramel brown in the areas where we still can see some gaps and also blend it with the orange we have added. Everything seems quite flat right now, so I'm going to add tiny amounts of white everywhere where I want to have a little bit more volume. This will act as a guide for me later on. So I added it on the left cheek and then also above both eyes. Don't worry if it looks a little bit crazy right now. We are going to layer a lot of color on top of it.
it's finally time to create the eyes. I'm rolling small amount of the reddish brown between my fingers to create a ball approximately the same size as the iris of the eye and then I'm carefully placing it where I have marked the black dot and I'm felting it down. Then we need strand of black wool. I'm rolling it between my fingers to make it easier to control. And I'm anchoring one of the ends down in the inner corner of the eye and carefully creating the line for the upper eyelid. I'm using the same color to create the pupil of the eye and then define the lower eyelid. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this tutorial, have you learned anything new and useful? You can also share any questions you have, I always love answering them and knowing that something I shared helped someone to create their own felt art always makes my day. You can also tag me on the social media if you are sharing your makes, you can find me as Mrs. Cute Felts on TikTok, Instagram and Facebook. And you also have a chance today to vote on what animal should I needle felt on the other mitten. Of course I can do another fox, but I was thinking that maybe it would be more interesting to felt something else and of course film a video for it. So don't be shy, share your ideas and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can watch my next video. After felting the eyes, I instantly noticed that I'm lacking a lot of orange in the image. So I jumped in to add it on the cheeks and under the eyes and I almost forgot to add the pupil for this eye on the right side. So you will see me doing it right now and then I will continue to work with the orange.
I think it's time to define the nose because right now it's looking quite flat. I'm using the orange first and then I'm moving on to work with the warm brown. I'm going to create a straight line on each side of the nose. It's starting on the tip of the nose where we added a little bit of darker brown before and it's going straight up and blending out just above the inner corner of the eye. I'm adding a little bit of this brown between the eyes too, just a tiny touch, and I'm leaving out the tip of the nose. This way we are creating more three-dimensional effect. Now let's add this color on the outer parts of the lines we created. And don't worry, I'm not going to cover the cheeks. Here you can see how I'm cutting off the excess wool. This will just help us to enhance the shadow here and make everything look more natural and proportional. I will leave the muzzle alone for a bit, so I'm not focusing on this area too much and making bad decisions. So I'm moving to the eyes now and I'm adding this dark brown in the inner corners. Just a tiny bit to create more shadow here because foxes naturally do have quite deep set eyes and this creates shadow. Then I'm adding the bright orange in the eyebrow area because here the light will hit a little bit more on the fur so there should be a highlight. Then using the bleached white we will create highlights in the eyes. Here I rolled the tiniest amount of the white between my fingers to create a tiny tiny ball and I'm carefully needle felting it in place. Yes, it looks like it's almost disappeared, but don't worry about it. You will see that in the end it's actually enough. Another tip I have for everyone who is trying to create their own fox wool painting is to take breaks and change their focus. Here I didn't want to overwork the eyes and the nose and make decisions that I regret later. So I decided to move on to finishing this ear. I'm using the gray to indicate the shadow and then I'm adding a lot of fluffy white to create the fluffy fur that is usually around the ears and actually foxes do have some of the fluff coming out of the ears. I think it's a nice protection and insulation in the winter, I guess. So I'm using the wool to create this fluffy effect. I'm letting the fiber overlap with the gray and even with the oranges I have used to create outlines for the ear and it makes everything look very fluffy and light. I think we have lost a lot of the 
puff in the nose. So I'm now going to take white wool, roll it between my fingers a little bit to create a little ball and I will try to add it back, making sure that I'm not covering the nose, the mouth or the little black line that connects these two. Here I decided to try something new. I need to add just a subtle lightness on the nose and in the eyebrows. So instead of adding more white wool here, I decided to try out the reverse needle. This needle, if you haven't tried it before, instead of felting everything down, pulls some of the fiber out. So I tried it on the top of the nose and here on the eyebrows and you can see that these areas get lighter because some of the fiber from the mitten gets pulled out on the top surface. Then I'm taking my multi needle tool with my regular felting needles and I'm felting the fiber back down. So there won't be holes in your mix, don't worry. But if you want to try out the reverse needle, give it a try. It's very fun. I got it from World of Wool. I will leave the link in the description. I feel like I have added the whites a bit too high. So now I will take my needle and lightly tuck the wool off the mat and cut it off. Remember that this should be very light tuck, otherwise you risk breaking your needle. And I'm also able to do this because I haven't gone over the whole piece, felting everything down super securely, so the fiber can be loosened up still. In later stages, this won't be possible. So maybe you would have to use a different approach. Now, based on the size of the chin, this looks like a very chunky fox, so I have to fix it. I'm taking the gray and lifting the shadow up until I'm happy with the size of the lower jaw, that is, in pure white. Here I think I have added a little bit too much of the grey, so I will layer a tiny amount of white on top of it to soften it. Now looking at the painting in general, we can notice that we have lost the pure whites and everything seems a little bit grey. So I'm now laying out the white on the cheeks and on the muzzle and I'm checking if I'm happy with what I'm seeing before I'm felting everything down. This restores the depth of our felted image and we can now see that the muzzle looks like it's really coming out of the picture. The image will look more three-dimensional if we have highlights right next to the shadows. Here you can see that I'm trying to avoid accidentally covering the shadows underneath the chin. I'm adding white only on the cheeks and the chin as the high points and then I might add some on the chest just to give it more fluffy and voluminous feeling but other than that I don't want to wash out the shadow underneath the chin. This should really be grey in order to enhance the depth.
looks like I forgot to finish off this other ear, so I'm using grey to define the shadow and then I will add the white fluffy bits. Let's add a little bit more orange, because if we are having white highlights, we are definitely having orange ones too. Our fox did look a little bit too brown for me, so I'm adding tiny, tiny amounts even on this side, just to make sure that we are separating our subject from the background a little bit better. And then I kept looking at my painting and I felt like something is a bit off. I think I have accidentally moved one of the guidelines I created when I started out the painting and the head just looks too flat. So I will make the forehead a little bit higher. Yes, I think that's looking way better. Of course, not with this harsh shadow. I used the warm brown to start it off and then I'm layering on the bright orange to even everything out and this will create a nice shadow. Yep, this shape does look way better than the previous one. And here I will share with you another wool painting secret I have. To bring more life to my paintings, I like to create a pop of color. Here you can see how I'm choosing which one I like best today. It has to be a related color to the overall color scheme you have going on in your wool painting. And this time I felt like this pastel yellow worked great. So I will create little highlights here. I'm working on the eyebrows and then I will add this yellow in some other places in my wool painting to add additional layer of interest. Of course, if you liked the overall look already and you don't want to do it, you can skip it. But I often do this with my birds and other animals I felt because this makes the overall image interesting and a little bit whimsical even. And I think it worked great in this one. I noticed that this ear on the left isn't very well defined and it somewhat blends in with the background. So I'm taking light gray and I'm carefully outlining the shape. 
This will help me to separate it and create more depth. Remember that you can always turn your piece around to get better access to a certain place, because it's always safer to change the placement of the piece instead of trying to needle felt in weird hand angles. I noticed some other shadows I wanted to deepen, so I'm using tiny tiny amounts of this light grey to go over them. While adding highlights here on the right side, I noticed that I could use some of the grey on the muzzle. I'm taking a tiny amount of it and rolling it between my fingers to create this strand and I will create a very very thin line to separate the upper jaw from the rest of the painting. This creates natural looking shadow and gives additional layer of depth. I'm using a single strand of black sheep wool to define the eyebrows. Later on I will blend them a little bit more, but I wanted to add a little bit of darker color here, because foxes do have quite distinct eyebrows. I restrained from adding whiskers too, because I think it would be too much um, for a wool painting in such a small scale but eyebrows, I think, was a must. I feel like this wool painting is almost finished. In order to make the right decisions whether or not I want to add more wool, yes, another layer of wool, or to just leave it as it is, I now spent some time felting everything down. This will compress the fiber and I will be able to see the actual color changes I have created and how the wool blends together and how the contrast looks when everything is felted down. So here is the result and I felt like it's a bit too much and I need to add more orange because the primary color that we all think of when we are thinking about foxes is the orange. So you will now see me adding hopefully the last layer of color in this painting. It might seem like we are covering up a lot that we created before but actually we can still see some color peeking through and mixing together with the orange that I'm adding on right now and that's exactly the look I was going for. This is just one of 2D needle felting techniques I have. You can check out my channel to see my other tutorials and let me know in the comments, as I already mentioned, what animal would you like to see on the other mitten or maybe you have other ideas for the content. You can also share your questions. I'm always happy to help and I'm thrilled if something I have shared has helped anyone to create their own felt art. Please tag me if you are sharing makes online. You can find me as Mrs. Cutefelts on TikTok and Instagram. And of course, I'm always here on YouTube. I'm happy with the amount of orange we have, and I think we have finally finished this painting. I will spend a good 30 minutes felting everything down to make sure that it's very secure and these mittens will be suitable for wear in a real world. I'm extremely slow and careful when removing my felt from the mat. 
It was fairly easy, I used my fingers to carefully lift it from the mat and when the whole piece is lifted only then I am trying to take the mitten off the mat completely. Take your time and be super careful here because you don't want to stretch all of the precious work you have put in. Remember that shallow pokes helps you to prevent painting sticking to the mat. I hope you learned something valuable today. I'm not sure if me talking so much was actually helpful. Let me know in the comments. Maybe you prefer seeing me felt with just music in the background. I can do that. Anyways, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these tutorials and hopefully see you in my next one.